What's good, y'all? It's boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 epic WWE tag teams that only lasted for one night. Sometimes we are uh, gifted with uh, a random pairing, a random tag team. You know, uh, WWE loves putting make together uh, makeshift tag teams or whatnot. Love them some tag team matches. So we're gonna check out some of these situations where you know maybe we could have seen something out of it. Maybe we could have actually seen maybe some more uh, tag team action from these particular wrestlers but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel let's get right into this. to be considered truly great a wwe tag team needs to have good matches engage in memorable feuds and you know win titles and all that sort of business typically over a long period of time so that they can properly establish themselves and cement their legacies some other lesser known tag teams however have been instantly and occasionally retroactively impressive based solely on the stature of the two individuals in question throughout the years wwe we have teased us with some truly incredible pairings only to cruelly leave us wanting more by having them compete in just a single match as a team i'm adam pacitti from cultaholic wrestling and these are 10 epic wwe tag teams that only lasted one night join us join us number 10 brock lesnar and eddie guerrero hmm. brock lesnar and eddie guerrero's names will always be attached to each other due to latino heat's unlikely wwe title triumph over the next big thing in the main event of No Way Out 2004. Mm -hmm. Less than two years before that, though, Brock Lesnar and Eddie Guerrero found themselves on the same team during the June 3rd 2002 wow, I didn't episode know that. of Raw. <laughs> wow. At the time, Lesnar was the impressive rookie who had put fans and wrestlers alike on notice in the few explosive months that he had been a member of the main roster. Veteran Guerrero, meanwhile, was in the process of re-establishing himself having returned to the company a week week after Brock's debut. Their opponents on the night were Rob Van Dam and Bubba Ray Dudley. RVD had beaten Guerrero in a brutal ladder match to recapture the Intercontinental title on the previous week's show, while Lesnar had brushed past Bubba to qualify for the King of the Ring tournament on the same broadcast. In their one tag outing, Brock and Eddie beat the ECW icons in a customarily decent match thanks to an F5 and a frog splash, as well oh, wow. as a timely assist from Paul Heyman. Cheeky bastard. Number nine, The Didn't Rock know that. and John Cena. Did not know WWE that. WWE gave themselves a year to build up the rivalry between John Cena and The Rock, but only got serious about reminding people of their future WrestleMania main event around the time of Survivor Series 2011. A couple of months before the pay-per-view, WWE announced that Rock and Cena would be on the same side for a traditional Survivor Series 10-man tag, but changed their minds about a month later and booked the People's Champ and Big Match John in a mm. standard tag bout against Awesome truth. Main eventing the 25th annual event in front of an expectant Madison Square Garden crowd, Dwayne Johnson did not disappoint in his mm -hmm. first match for over seven and a half years. Despite Miz and Truth being booked as the most dangerous heels on the roster at the time, no, seriously, stop yeah. laughing, it was yeah. a foregone <laughs> conclusion that two of the biggest stars in the industry would be going over. Uh -huh. But could they coexist? Well, of course. long enough for the great one to put away Miz with a people's elbow, after which he delivered a rock yeah. bottom to his own partner. Yep. Number eight, Mr. Perfect and Randy Savage. One of the featured matches at the 1992 Survivor Series was to see Ric Flair and Razor Ramon go up against the Ultimate Maniacs. That's the Coke dealer's dream team. <laughs> and the Ultimate Warrior. Unfortunately, Jim Helwig went and spoiled it all by doing something stupid like failing a drug test for human growth hormone use, which earned him a pink slip due to the company being embroiled in a steroid scandal at the time. Mm. So the face-painted muscle head was out, but Macho Man had the perfect reply. Placement. Literally, it was Mr. Perfect. You already knew that. Said it about 30 seconds ago. Turning babyface, Kurt Hennig's alter ego left the Nature Boy's side and accepted Randy's offer to team with him against his former client and the bad guy. Mm. Chilling instantly, Savage and Perfect proved themselves a formidable duo in their attempts to counteract the cheating antics of their nefarious foes. It wasn't an all-timer or anything, but it was a damn good match, and it was lovely to see Perfect back in the ring for the first time since dropping the IC title to Bret Hart. His one night only team with Savage won the match too, albeit by disqualification. <laughs> Number seven, Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. Now this one right here. 
rivalry between Shawn Michaels and The was Undertaker good. was long and legendary. Mm -hmm. Two of the greatest of all time had some of the best matches in WWE history, notably at Bad Blood 1997 in the first ever Hell in a Cell match, and then in back-to-back -back WrestleManias, many yep. years, and conversions to Christianity later. Yeah. <laughs> wrestled casket matches and teamed up against one another to, um, mixed results. The Heartbreak Kid and the Phenom have also, on one specific occasion, joined forces. Well, one time on television, that is, because Michaels and Taker did tag on some house shows and for some TV taping dark matches during the mid-90s. Mm. The one time their union was captured on film, Sean and Taker, let's call them the dead sexy boys, battled JBL and Vladimir Kozlov. Kicking off the March 16th, 2009 episode of Raw, the dead sexy boys looked to be <laughs> the wrestling god and the um, big scary Russian bloke, knowing that they would be standing opposite mm -hmm. one another on the grandest stage in just under three three weeks time. Yep. Sean got to play some mind games at the end too, tagging himself in as Taker was about to mm -hmm. hit a choke slam and stealing the win for himself following some sweet chin music before hitting his partner with a super yep. kick as well. Number six, uh, Triple H. Some, man, one of my favorite matches of all time. WrestleMania matches for sure. H and CM Punk. The first time Triple H and CM Punk found themselves on the same side was at the 2006 Survivor Series. Yep. Back then, the Straight Edge Superstar was a burgeoning cult hero on the ECW brand and probably just happy to be tagging with DX and the Hardys on a Big Four pay-per-view. The game must have been silently fuming as Punk was, on the night, the most popular member uh -huh. of the Fivesome and received the yep. biggest pop of the show with fans continuing to chant his name as his team scored a clean sweep victory. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that was why almost five years later, Hunter tried to put the skinny fat indie guy in his place by inexplicably beating him in a no disqualification match at Night of Champions 2011. The two egomaniacs then momentarily let bygones be bygones and combined their powers to take down R-Truth and The Miz, who had interfered and attacked both men at Night of Champions. Punk took another L, tagging with the cerebral assassin at Vengeance after Kevin Nash neutralized his click buddy and Awesome Truth, who remember were being booked as the most dangerous yeah. Heels on the roster at this time. Stop laughing. <laughs> combo on poor Phil for the pin. Number five, AJ Styles and John Cena. While John Cena was establishing himself as WWE's new major star, AJ Styles was solidifying himself as TNA's MVP. Mm -hmm. What was once an interpromotional dream match finally became a reality when the phenomenal one signed with WWE in 2016 and subsequently had a series of barn burners with Facts. the Doctor of Thugonomics. Facts. They displayed enviable chemistry as opponents and had genuine classics at major shows like SummerSlam and Royal Rumble, but mm -hmm. people may be slower to recall the one and only time that to put their rivalry aside to team up on television that is because they did band together for one non-televised dark match hoping to upset them in the main event of the july 11th 2017 episode of smackdown were kevin owens and rusev this was one of those tag matches that are done to promote two forthcoming singles matches, mm -hmm. in this case a flag match between Cena and Rusev, and a US title bout between Styles and Owens, both at Battleground. The heels would not be successful, duh, with KO <laughs> falling victim to a Pele kick, followed by an FU. Number 4, Rob Van Dam and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Several months into the invasion, I think I tensions this began one. to rise inside the camp of the Alliance as group leader and then WWE champion Steve Austin's paranoia came to the fore. Stone Cold started butting heads yeah. with Rob Van Dam, <laughs> the increasingly popular hardcore champion whose mm -hmm. laid-back persona was at odds with Austin's high-strung ways. The two clashed in a singles match on the September 4th, 2001 episode of SmackDown, with RVD picking up an unlikely victory. And friction was still evident when they teamed up in the main event of Raw two weeks later to take on WWE's Chris Jericho and Kurt Angle. Not only was this a way to further the alliance infighting between the Texas Rattlesnake and the whole flipping show, but also a means to preview two matches at Unforgiven in six days' time. Austin versus Angle for the WWE title and Van Damme's hardcore title defense against Chris Jericho. Mm -hmm. The all-action contest was won by Y2J and the Olympic Hero, but it sure was cool to see ECW's finest on the same side as WWE's main man for this one occasion. No yeah. word on whether they smoked a naughty cigarette or drank a can of adult beverage in the locker room after. Number three, Hulk Hogan and Ricky Steamboat. 
If you were a heel in WWE from the mid 80s to the early 90s, you wanted to be programmed opposite Hulk Hogan. Yeah. And if you were a babyface during that time frame, you wanted to be the Hulkster's friend, advisor, tag partner, manager, or personal driver. Hell, <laughs> to ride the coattails of the Golden Goose. Isn't that right, Mr. Beefcake? Ricky Steamboat was one of the good guys who periodically enjoyed the Hogan rub. Not in the Heather Clem sense, let me be clear. The two men tagging together on six different occasions, though only only one was televised. The others took place at non-televised events or to send the crowd home happy after a TV taping. Mm. Teaming together on March 30th, 1986 for an event that was for Philadelphia cable channel Prism, the Dragon and Terrible Terry defied the odds and bested Johnny Valiant, Don Morocco and Mr. Fuji in a three-on-two handicap oh, match. Oh damn, a three-on-two! Steamboat hit a crossbody off Hogan's mighty shoulders, allowing Hulk to hit the big leg on Fuji for the win. Number two, The Undertaker versus Roman Reigns. I remember this one. At WrestleMania 33, I remember Roman this Reigns one. became just the second person in WWE history to defeat The Undertaker at the showcase <sighs> of the Immortals. Regrettably, though, the Big Dog's win was marred by the Phenom's poor performance. Yeah. As recounted years later in the Last Ride documentary, Taker simply shouldn't have been out there that night as he was seriously hampered by injury and unable to go at the standard that fans had come to expect, especially when it comes to WrestleMania. Mania. Of course. Hopefully, the next time Roman Reigns and The Undertaker shared the ring would be an occasion to celebrate. Uh -huh. Over two years later, at Extreme Rules 2019, the Tribal Chief and the Dead Man teamed up against Drew McIntyre and Shane. I remember this because they actually showed out. They actually had a good match. This was crazy. <laughs> it was so crazy to see this. This was actually a really good match. It On paper, you don't think it should be, but nah. This was actually, he really went out there, you know, because The Undertaker, you know, he, he wanted to make sure he can, he can give a good performance. And when he did this with Roman, that was great. That was fantastic. He, he, uh, he, he. He, they definitely showed out in this match. McMahon in a no-holds-barred match. His aches and pains evidently alleviated thanks to surgery and rehabilitation in the interim. Taker looked so much better than he had in so a long much time, better. doing his damnedest to eradicate the memory of his previous two mm -hmm. matches. It was also super cool seeing Roman get to team with the Hall of Famer in what was, for all intents and purposes, Mark Calloway's final proper match. Mm -hmm. Number one, John Cena and Sting. Sting's WWE run was, disappointingly, of a little course. bit of a washout. Yeah. After waiting so many years to see the icon in a WWE setting, what fans are bound to recall from it more than anything is him doing the job for Triple H at WrestleMania Stupid. 31 and Don't then agree. suffering a serious injury en route to another loss, this time to Seth Rollins, six months later. Yeah. It's worth remembering that his WWE run did yield some highlights, however, such yeah, as the big debut, that statue reveal, and the time he tagged with John Cena on the Night of Champions 2015 Go Home Edition of Raw. It started as a singles match with Sting taking on old WCW foe The Big Show before Rollins interfered and caused a premature DQ. The face that runs the place then evened up the odds, leading to an impromptu tag match. And wouldn't you know it, the Stinger actually got to taste victory in a WWE <laughs> ring, making the architect submit to the Scorpion Deathlock. It's one of those things where, you know, you just go back and you're like, damn, man, what could have been? What could have been? What should have been? Didn't happen, man. Didn't happen. But comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite uh, one night only uh, tag team. Uh, if it was on this list or if it wasn't on this list, let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. You guys are shown on the channel Road to 150K, and I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world. And you're in the Cuts World Heavyweight Champion. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.